Manual Lathe Startup Protocols. This video demonstrates our startup, sign in, sign up, and sign out procedures. Go to the machine that you're assigned to and wait for the instructor to unlock the toolbox. Sign the attendance sheet on the right hand column. Record the machine that you're using. The machine number is on the back right hand top corner of the machine right above the power switch. When the instructor unlocks the toolbox associated with that machine, check to make sure there are no missing tools and if any tools are damaged. Locate the lathe startup protocol sheet. It is posted somewhere that's visible inside the lathe operating area. Okay, let's go through all nine steps of the lathe startup protocols. Number one, check the chuck guard. Ensure the guard is operational. Number two, check and tighten all the cam lock bolts on the main spindle plate to ensure the chuck or face plate is secure. First put the machine in neutral. The cam locks are located right behind the face of the chuck, right there. First I will loosen a cam, which I loosen counterclockwise. If the cam is in the 12 o'clock position, which means there's a tiny dot at the top, that means it's in the off position. And if I turn it clockwise, it will lock in. We must be careful because if we tighten them counterclockwise, they will also lock in, but that's not the proper protocol. They must be tightened in a clockwise manner. Then continue and tighten all of the cams in a clockwise position. If you want to remove the chuck or a faceplate, put the cams in the 12 o'clock position. Number three. Check all hand controls and levers to ensure functionality. If the carriage hand wheel or cross side hand wheel does not move, do not start the machine. That means one of your feeds are engaged and the machine will run away on you. The carriage hand wheel moves freely. The side hand wheel moves freely. That means there are no power feeds engaged. Number four, turn on the main power switch. There are a couple of different versions of the same power switch, so here are some examples. When you turn on the power switch, there should be a noticeable feel of the switch being turned on. If not, there's a problem with the machine. Number five, reset and disengage all emergency stops. Keep in mind it is possible for there to be more than one emergency stop on each machine. Before the power light will come on, you need to release the e-stop. The power button is the one that has the little lightning bolt on it. When that switch is turned, the light will come on indicating that there's power to the machine. The green T button at the top is a jog spindle button. The spindle jog button will not work if the spindle engage lever is in the on position. Number six, after the part is tightened in the chuck, drop down the guard and engage the spindle. Make certain that you never leave the chuck key in the chuck and always return it back to its proper place. Number seven, check the emergency stop by engaging them while the spindle is turning. Number eight, check the pedal brake located at the operator's feet by engaging the spindle and depressing the pedal brake. With all of the guards in place and the spindle running, press firmly down onto the brake. And don't forget to disengage the spindle on lever. Number nine, if there are any electrical or mechanical issues, please do not operate the lathe and inform faculty member or a technologist. Now that you've completed the nine startup protocols, don't forget to sign the pre-operation startup sheet. It is located on the back of the toolbox. Okay. All that is required is your initials and the date.
Now the fun part, it's time to machine. And remember, safety first. Lay the shutdown, end of class and clean up is called. Clean your machine and surrounding areas. Return all tools to the proper area. Wait by your machine and the instructor will inspect the machine and sign you out.